Hello and welcome to the video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to have a full uptime on your Elementium Pocket Anvil trinket. For those who don't know, this trinket drops from the Amalgamation Chamber and it's best in slot for at least Red Palace uh, together with the Beacon. Um, even on lower difficulty, it's definitely worth getting. But it loses value tremendously if you lose the stacks. So that's why uh, I'm trying to help you with that in this video. First things first, you can see my Anvil stacks on the bottom left corner. I made you a little tracker there. Um, I suggest you get the tracker for yourself as well. So you know exactly when it's about to run out. You can use any weak aura for this. I use tell me when add-in, which is basically like weak auras, but it's I think easier and faster to set up. I really like tell me when. I've used it for uh, years. I don't care too much for the damage from actually pressing the trinket, because that initial hit is uh, quite small, especially on like one or two targets. I don't care about it at all. I use the use effect mainly to just keep it up because it refreshes the duration on the buff. So if there's any chance for the, the buff to drop in Multiclass, then just hold on to it and press it when, like on the last second. If you're absolutely sure that you're going to keep the, the stacks, then on like more than two targets, the damage is okay, I guess. So feel free to press it when it's actually safe. Obviously, at the at the start, it's different because you want to get up to the five stacks as soon as you you just can. And yeah, unfortunately, this um, this reset was spiteful shades, so it's like cheating. It's really easy. You can really easily keep combat with the shades, but if you just look at the play, then uh, you realize that I would keep the stacks anyway, playing like this. Right here in uh, Neltarian's lair, when you jump down to the first boss, I like to taunt one of the fish uh, in, in the water to keep uh, my combat. Now, I thought I would just make a guide about the anvil, but might as well talk about the bosses while we're here. Um, so this first boss is pretty straightforward. Um, every time he reaches 100% energy, he does the shatter. Um, when it casts the shatter, I like to step in just a little bit because you're going to get knocked back and you don't want to get pushed out of melee range. So while the, the cast is going on, just step in a little bit and then you get knocked and then don't move at all. Any movement will hurt you really hard. So that's why I'm, I want to move in before the, the cast ends. The shards, uh, those are tank cone attack that's why you should never stand in front of the boss obviously just stand at the side basically the shards hit harder than moving after the shatter but if you have to move away from the shards you you are gonna have to do it even though the movement hurts uh, you can pop any defensive if you really have to move um, a specific for the red palace since we have a lot of defensives with very short cooldown i always pop something for the shatter is that that's the one that hurts the most uh, on this boss so every time shatter is about to land i, I pop a, a small defensive every time also the more adds there are and the higher health the adds are the harder the shatter is gonna hurt so every time the boss is close to 100 energy you start you need to start really focusing on the ads make sure there is none alive when the shatter cast ends okay now when the boss dies you want to charge for the barrels as soon as you can uh, then throw these fish at the at the mobs this is going to give you combat for a little bit 
and it's just enough so that you get to the next fish right here in the water. Go for this fish on your right, because the other ones are line of sight. This one is a little bit as well, but it's a little bit easier to find compared to the other ones. And also then you're closer to the shore, so you can move on faster. You get like almost a, a good minute of combat from taunting the fish, including the first one before the first boss. So those are super handy here. After the first boss, there is a second option as well. You can go back to the, the fishes you saw before the boss and taunt one of those and then run for the barrel. But just know that when you're in a barrel in combat, you can't throw the fish, so you can't do both. Uh, but you have easily enough combat if you just taunt the fish and then go for the barrel. But I think charging just for the barrel and then throwing the fish is a little bit faster. It's probably going to save you like two more seconds. So which which way ever you prefer, I guess. I'm going to be taunting a lot of different mobs in this, uh, in this key. It shouldn't make any problems for your team. And the, the reason why I'm taunting instead of using any other ability is because the taunt doesn't kill the small mob or a crit there. Um, it just gives you combat for way longer when the mob doesn't die. If you want, you can um, you can set up some kind of a nameplate add-in to show critter nameplates, so it's easier to see them, and then use those critters in any dungeon really to keep up your unveil stacks, especially in like. All the man, it's very handy. You can easily have 100% uptime in any key, but especially in all the man, if you use the critters, it'll be fine. Also, some something worth mentioning is, um, I, I know how tempting it is to ninja pool for your party just to keep up the stacks, but try to avoid that because that's really gonna tilt your your team, especially your tank. And then that might might cause problems, especially in bug groups. T the tanks might really tilt, and you know, Hearthstone out. You never know. So try not to ninja pool at all. Really, that's another good reason to save the use from your trinket. Is just to play safe, and uh, if it's gonna avoid you ninja pooling, then I think it's already worth it. Also in lower keys, the tanks tend to move slower, so there might be more combat breaks. Also healers might need to drink more, they don't play optimally with the mana. Then uh, you want to save the use for out of combat when you're waiting for your healer to drink. If you want, you can tell the tank that you're playing the Anvil Trinket at the start of the key and then hope that that's going to make him pull a little bit faster no i told you not to ninja pool ever but if however you you do end up ninja pooling something then try to um use like cc right after maybe if like a it's if it's a stunnable mob you can you can pull then stun or you can blind them while waiting for the tank to arrive but yeah again don't Ninja pool. Just before making this video, I did go through all of my toys, which took like a good 20 minutes. But I wanted to make sure um, that I can't find any toys that you could use um, inside the Mythic Plus to keep your you in combat. Um, but if I missed any, then let me know in the comments. Um, I did find the critter and cannon i guess it's called but sadly you can't use that in mythic plus but i guess in any other content you could use the critter cannon because it spawns critters and then you can hit them and get in combat if you're struggling to keep up the, the stacks in any other dungeon then i suggest you can pick up some more mobility talents um, for example, Red Pally is very slow, but you can take the movement speed from your freedom 
for example that way you can also freedom the tank and yourself and you both get movement speed so that way the tank can pull faster and you can get back to combat faster you can also take double steed for example and that's gonna help because usually i find myself being the last last person to arrive to the fight if i don't have double steed you know now second boss nothing crazy here either the most dangerous thing is those hands um for tanks you don't want to ever tank the boss at the middle because the hands are really buggy at the middle they spawn and uh, move super randomly so just always put the the boss to the side and then it's way easier to deal with the hands now when the totems um spawn you can you can uh, pull some leave damage for those for example i like to use a wake of ash on those usually maybe beacon trinket is best to use on those on this boss definitely it hits uh, more on multiple targets um right there i kind of fucked it because the boss jumped away as i was casting my beacon so it only hit one target and i cried a little bit um then this phase in bug groups, I usually try to keep an eye on the totems because I I think it's a healer job, but I don't trust bugs, so just uh, I think everybody should try to do it. Unless you're on like Discord and someone says they got it. And also for tanks, very important about these totems. Um, you can actually stack them, and how you stack them is when the first one spawns. You rotate the boss 90 degrees to your right and then the second one is gonna spawn on top of the the first one and then you can even move the boss a couple of steps to stack all of them so then there's three uh, three targets directly on each other now right here after the second boss is down i, I saved some steed stacks for this we also had a, a nice uh, speed totem. But what you can do here actually is taunt the snails. Um, don't hit them. Because they have more than a million health. You don't want to deal with those. And also if you hit them you might cleave onto the other mobs. Which is not good obviously. If you pull extra mobs that's not good. So just taunt the, the snail. It's going to start running away from you directly. And then... After like 20 seconds or so, it's going to return to where it came from and you leave the combat. So it's it's super safe. I'm going to show you some footage from uh, Mythic Zero where I was I was trying to get uh, in combat with the other mobs or, or act, like pull the other mobs by just taunting the snails and it didn't happen. So I think it's very safe. Just taunt the snail there. And you should be fine. Okay, third boss, the worm boss. You definitely want to always play a poison dispo here if you are playing a spec that can. Uh, I didn't pick it because I forgot and that's a huge mistake. Anyone who ever healed this boss knows that um, any poison dispels help a lot. Um, this boss is probably the hardest in the whole dungeon anyway, so definitely take poison dispels for this if you can. Um, for beacon usage actually on this boss it's by far the best to use the beacon on the, on the ads when they spawn um, so how it works is when the ad spawns they stack actually like one or two seconds after spawning uh, so it's kind of tricky to time the beacon so that it hits both but you can you can slow the ads so it's easier to 
time it. That's by far the, the best useful beacon. You can also do a, a wake of ash again on these. It slows them and deals damage, so it's nice. Um, also, if you don't know your tank, I would suggest to step out of melee when the the spiked tongue is about to end. Because if the tank is not in melee in time, then you might get smacked and you die instead. Uh, so I, I usually try to step out a little bit. And for defensives, I would use defensives just... Um, especially if there is an overlap with the Toxic Reach and the uh, Rancid Maw. Then definitely use defensives there. But if, if there isn't... Or if you have spare defensives, just use them on the on the toxic uh, reach because it hurts even if you dispel it, and that's when the healer needs the help the most, you know. Now I think this is probably the hardest part in the the dungeon, for keeping your anvil stacks, depending on on your road really. But for this, you definitely want to jump down immediately. And you want to save two steeds um, and just get ready for the mobs. A lot of people skip from the right side, so that's when it really gets tricky to save the, the stacks. But if you your team is pulling these two mobs like, like mine did here, then it's quite easy.
now for the last boss. How the boss works is that the wall spawn on random players. So that's why you want to spawn the first wall very close to the boss. So at the start, everyone should um, stack to melee. And then the add from the boss actually spawns on like the left foot of the boss every time. Just in front of the left foot. So if your tank can rotate the boss so that the left foot is next to the wall, then the add is gonna spawn on top of the, the wall and get stunned immediately. Definitely save all your cooldowns for the add every time, especially if you're playing a class with uh, one mini cooldowns, you have cooldowns for every single add. Uh, the add deals a lot of um, AoE damage every time it moves at all, so that's why you want to uh, not walk the, the add like it happens right here. The add is on me and you can see we almost die here just because the add is walking such a great distance. So that was that was on the tank. Um, well, actually we spawned the wall kind of far as well. But you, he could still move the boss, I think. It's a group effort. No, no blaming here. Um, defensive cooldowns definitely use if an ad is gonna move like that. So at least save at least one major defensive for if that's ever gonna happen. And then smaller defensives you can use whenever an ad spawns, I think. It's, uh, or whenever you go low health. Make sure your loot spec is uh, right. This was an okay LFG run. Uh, I did it for my cap because I'm slacking right now. Um, Again, if if you have any toys or any other tricks in mind for keeping your unveil stacks, then please let me know in the comments. I'm genuinely interested to know. Because in other dungeons, there are some uh, spots where it's kind of hard to keep it, uh, honestly. So let me know. And also, if you struggle in any other key, then let me know and I'll cover that key in the next one. Because I can... I can keep my uptime 100% every dungeon with these tips, um, but sometimes it is tricky, so I, I do understand that.